Hey guys, Army Stinger 150 with you. So here we go, I've got a simulated riverbed. Of course, most of these have fossils in them because I go and find fossils. So most of my uh, rocks here will be limestone and fossil ferrous materials. So when you're trying to identify flint, you're going to look for a, a luster that is kind of glassy, silky, and waxy. Okay, you can see the limestone pieces. If you look right here, hopefully this comes out right. You can see how this is kind of waxy, but it has a glass-like appearance, especially on the fractures. Now this flint can be a really, really dark brown, kind of something like this. But it has really nice sharp edges. You can see how the fractures look like glass has been shattered. That's a really good indicator that this is flint. Or even chert. Because we have a lot of chert here in Texas. And here's another piece right here. You can see how it's fractured. That's a pretty good example of one. Now here's some with some of the other matrix in it. See the white part? See it's got a uh, patina on it. It's got really nice sharp edges. It's kind of flat. This is going to be a really good piece of flint to use. I have a really big one over here. And see it's kind of a light brown, almost grayish, tan color. And see how it's fractured right there? I've actually broke this right there. So I can make it a little bit more sharp. Easier to use the fire steel with it. And I just happen to have a, a fire steel that I just made. Now there are many ways to uh, strike flint. You can do it like I do. Or you get a nice sharp edge, like right here. And go like that. Doesn't take hardly any energy to do. And some people like to hold the uh, the steel steady and do the opposite. But of course, I think it's a lot easier to do with the steel in hand and using it to strike the flint. Let's see how this turns out. Hopefully this will pick up. I know it's bright right here, so let's see. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Easy. And you know, you can put your claw, uh, your char cloth right here and kind of fold it over and you can catch the sparks on it this way. Okay, you don't have to have the char cloth laying in your bundle, you know, for your fire, your bird's nest, whatever you want to call it. You can put the char cloth and drape it around here and you can catch the sparks on it this way. Which is quite easy. As you can see, this piece of flint is really working good. That's pretty much all there is to uh, identifying the chart or the flint. Now, all of these pieces I'm picking up are relatively good, especially once they have sharp edges like this. Some of these I've made sharp edges to, and some of them I haven't. See how this one's a dark or a light, excuse me, light tan color to a little brownish? You can see it has some of the matrix of limestone in there with it. It also has kind of a silky or waxy kind of luster to it. It's kind of brownish. Over here I got a few uh, examples of some more flint. This is more chert. You can see it has a lot of the uh, matrix in there, the outer covering. Now this one I'd have to break apart to get to the good flint, but I can still light this. With the fire steel, I can still get some sparks on this. So, I'm actually doing a really good job with that. So that works. And we've got one that's an even worse example, which is chert. And it's got several uh, different layers and stuff in there. And I haven't really tried this one, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, see? 
That works really well. And uh, one one note, you kind of want to keep these things at a 90 degree angle on the uh, sharp edges. That works, works really well. And of course, this is just a file. This is an old file that I had. All I did was take my grinder to it. And you see how it's kind of uh, convex? That kind of aids in being able to direct where you want to hit the flint. You know, if you have a straight edge, like on the back, it's not going to work as well as if you have a kind of a curved edge. And once this is gnarled up on this edge, it's a lot easier to spark as well because the uh, flint can start to dig into this and shave off parts of it. You know, because that's what it, the sparks are. They're hot pieces of shaved metal. So, and really anything with a hardness over 7 will work with your fire steel. So you can get a piece of metal and hit any kind of rock that's over a hardness of 7 to get it to spark. So it is brownish, has a waxy luster, looks kind of like broken glass, can be dark brown to light tan when you pick it up kind of feel it You'll see how it has the sharp edges see how it fractures like glass so that's how you find a chert or flint it's usually the fire steel so so it works there you go hope you guys enjoyed it